Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be covering something I've been getting a lot of requests for. So if you've been sending me requests for this one, hey, it's finally done. And I know there is a very avid number of Rust stations out there. You guys are definitely fans of the Rust programming language, at least a lot of you are. And today we're going to be looking at a newish 3D game engine called RG3D, which is part of the Rust ecosystem. Now I covered Rust uh, back in July of 2018, very briefly, kind of looked at the game development scene in the world of Rust. If you want to go ahead check out that video it might be a little out of date at this point in time but there were some major players in the space there was amethyst and there was piston those were probably the two biggest game engines at the time since then there is another one that has risen and that is bevy and it's an excellent engine it's ecs based or anti-component based uh data driven game engine in rust probably the current most popular option out there right now uh, but today we have a new one and like I said a lot of you have been requesting me to cover this one and it is RG3D the Rust Game Engine 3D uh uh, anyways, uh, this is a 3D game engine built in Rust, and you've got a, a kind of a who's who of features going on here. So you got high-quality volumetric lights. It works on Windows, Linux, Mac, and also on the web using WebAssembly. Deferred shading. You've got built-in saving and loading the entire state of the engine in one call. Uh, Full-featured scene graph. High-quality binaural sound. Standalone scene editor. We'll see that in action and show you how to build it. Advanced physics, including rigid body, colliders, ray casting, and so on. User interface, including widgets, including the editor itself, is made using that UI toolkit. Advanced animation system, multiple camera rendering, async asset management, you've got skinning, multiple scene support, normal parallax, environment mapping, level of detail support, green space ambient occlusion, fast approximately anti-aliasing, geometry instancing, render and texture, skybox, light map generator, particle systems, nav, nav meshes with A-star pathfinding, FBX loader, uh, which unfortunately doesn't load embedded textures to my experience, which is a little irritating, but uh, TTF and OTF font support, various file, um, texture support, powerful core library, fast iterative compilation, lots of examples. It's production ready. Uh, they're building their own game in it, uh, station, a, whatever that word is. Um, kind of to prove that this is a ready-to-go engine. Now, I've got to warn you before we get too far into it. There is not a lot of documentation. Now, the nice thing is since it's Rust, it's pretty easy to get up and going. But if you're completely new to the Rust tool chain and this game engine is new to you, this is what you've got. There's no documentation beyond these three tutorials. There's a number of examples, but if you can't get running with the examples and the tutorials, you are going to struggle with this engine. But I'm going to show you the very basics of getting it up and going, and hopefully the tutorials will be enough for you. There's also some quality of life features that are definitely missing, such as tooltips in the editor or for support for HD uh, high definition monitors, which is kind of a trick. But uh, if you are interested in checking this one out, it is an open source project under the MIT license. Obviously, it is written in Rust. One thing you are going to notice, it is very actively updated. There was an update three hours ago. Um, they, they do fairly common releases. As you can see by the release number 0.22, this is a fairly young game engine. So now let's take a look at how you go ahead and get started. Obviously, what you're going to want to do is grab the source code. Just go in here and grab it right there. And we're going to need uh, a command prompt. Now, obviously, I have Rust installed already. There is an installer with uh, just take the default. It will set up everything you need uh, to get it up and running right now to know that you're up and running right. Let me just get this expanded out so you can see it nicely. All right, that should work. Uh, just run the command cargo. If the command cargo works, you're good to go. All right, so what we're going to do is go to the temp directory because I live there. And we're going to do a git clone and we're going to pull this archive down. Now, this is about, um, I think about 250 MIB. Uh, so it's going to uh, take a little bit of time. I've never really figured out why uh, GitHub is slow for me. I, I've got a 1.5 gigabyte connection and a lot of times GitHub just pulls down at, at glacial speeds. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this while it finishes the download here. All right, so all told, it comes in about a quarter of a gigabyte in size. So now let's take a look at what we got here. Uh, we're in the RG3D directory now. I'm going to go ahead and take a look. The key thing here is this Cargo. Cargo is sort of the all-in-one build package system inside of Rust. It makes our life really, really easy, as we're going to see in a second. I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of th key things in here. Open up a copy of Explorer. So you can see here, the key things to know about, there are a number of examples available. And we're gonna show you how to run these examples in a second. And it will automatically build the engine when we want to run the examples. And this is probably the place where you're gonna go ahead and start learning things off the hop. Other than that, your source code for the engine itself is all available right here if you wanna jump in and take a look at things. And there's uh, some data available inside of examples if you wanna play around. So there's some uh, project files to work with. So now we got that, let's go ahead and take a look in the examples at some code. So we'll look at the, um, the simple example. 
So I'll just open that up in Visual Studio uh, like so. Here we go. So you're going to see Rust code. If you've never used it before, Rust is very similar to C++ that it's very much inspired by. If you have some experience with C++ or, or C Sharp or whatever, you should be able to pick up most of Rust in a, a really relatively short period of time. There's a couple of tricky things in Rust, and I'm no Rust expert by any means whatsoever. Uh, but you see here, uh, you've got straight out uh, loading for loading your scene in. Uh, but the key thing here, you're going to see how games are handled. Uh, your game is managed down here, and you're going to notice you just basically have a number of different callbacks. On tick, which is called each frame. On initialization, which is called when it is first created. And then we finally have on Windows event, which is happened when a window event happens. And then here you have your creation code, where you're basically just creating a new one and running it. Pretty straightforward on the whole. This is where, of course, you are going to probably come in and learn things, because once again, there is not a ton of documentation. Uh, but this does show you how to load FBX files into place um, and handle them, set things up. It's pretty straightforward code on the whole. And let me just go ahead and show you what that code actually does. Now, I actually already ran this one, so it's gonna be a little bit quicker the second time. You're gonna find initial builds uh, with Rust. It's going to build all of the uh, engine it needs to run the example. So the first build is pretty slow, and then subsequent builds are pretty quick. So everything in Rust is done using cargo. And we're gonna do a run. And we're going to run one of these examples. So we're just do bat dash dash example and then pick one. So for example, here, what we just looked at the code for was simple. So let's go take a look at simple. Uh, so just like that. And another thing, and this might be a Windows only thing, but I found a few of these examples ran really, really, really slow under the debug build. So I do release only. Uh, okay, why are you doing that? Why are you missing some files? Okay, one second. Ah, my bad. I'm in the examples directory right now. All right, let's do that back. We'll go back to where that, again, cargo, that's your family. That's the home. This is the root of your project. So we're going to do the exact same command. I'm just going to do it in the right directory this time. And here you can see the results. Now that has been built once. I'll show you another one built from scratch. So you can see what the build time is like. Once the engine has been built, though, it's not too bad. So you can see an example. This is what the code we looked at handled. And uh, yeah, pretty... Uh, Pretty straightforward and clean to work with. Uh, you do have a number of different examples available there. So let's say we're going to look at, uh, what else did I have? Okay, we'll do train. Uh, so let's do here, uh, train, like so. So again, the initial build. So this has done, um, already built all of the requirements. So the engine itself has already been built. So now it's just building the train example. So the 266 files before, that is to build the engine. So you're going to see nice, quick, iterative um, build times for sure. So here you can see, there we go, train example, like so. And let's look at one other example and do UI. Because it's got its own UI system built in that is used entirely to make the um, uh, editor, which we're going to check out in just one second. So again, it doesn't have to do the entire build, it just builds the one example after the initial build. So that is definitely nice because sitting here watching a video, watching a uh, Rust code build isn't really that exciting. And here you can see some of the user interface stuff in place. So you've got drop downs, list boxes, sliders, uh, slider, um, slider controls like so. Uh, so you have a number of UI elements, bull, um, buttons, etc., that you can use in your own game. And that is all built in as well. Like I said, that is all used in the editor. So let's look at that now. So here we're going to go back over here. And the editor is actually a separate project. I'm, going, of course, going to have all these resources linked down below. So don't worry about where I'm going for things. So this one is Rusty Editor. The process here is about as straightforward as it gets. Just go ahead and clone that one. And then um, get clone, paste. Uh, this one is a much smaller project. It's only 2,481 2, files, so pretty quick there. Uh, we're going to switch into that, so Rusty Editor. And then you're going to notice, once again, Cargo is right there. So there's only really one project here. It's pretty straightforward. All we want to do is a Cargo um, run. And we will this will go ahead and do... So here is the full build process. You can see here, so it's going to go through all of the requirements. So this, this is what you would have if you had just done... Um, the first build for the first time you run an example, this is building the entire engine. Now, again, what you saw from me doing subsequent builds on examples, you only have to do this when changes happen. So a nice iterative build process with Rust. And we still have 150 files left to go. It's, it's not really that painful. It's probably been building for about 30 seconds right now. So maybe a two to three minute build for the first time. But I will uh, let it run and be right back. 
All right, there we go. We're coming to the conclusion here. You can see it's building the, the ends of the engine, all the other dependencies first. One of the really nice things, again, you're going to find when working with Rust is you just don't have the same kind of pain you do with C++ build systems. Unless, of course, it fails. And then it, it gets a lot less pleasant. But in terms of the default experience, building stuff in Rust is generally a quite easy and pleasant experience. And where are we at? All right, come on. Let's finish this up. 244, we're building. So this is building uh, the, the Rust game engine itself. That's the second from last build. And then it's going to go in and build the editor. And then uh, we're good to go. Do, do, do. And done. Now, the nice thing is, again, the next time you go ahead and do this build, you're only going to have to do step 246, not the 245 that led up to it. So it does make it substantially quicker on subsequent builds. Um, the other thing is, I think I did this as just cargo run. I think that will do a debug build by default. So if you wanted to have a release build, do dash dash release. Now, this may be a little hard for you to read. I apologize for that. Unfortunately, there is not high DPI support on this application that I can find. So that does make it a little bit tricky. So we're going to go ahead, set a working directory here. Um, one thing I do find very annoying is all of the um, all of the uh, controls are using like this homebrew um, file navigation stuff, and that's always a frustrating experience. All right, so here we go. This is where you would go ahead and create and instantiate world. So you place 3D objects, etc. in. Uh, you've got a number of different 3D objects. If you have anything available, they will be right here. Uh, so let's say, go ahead here, we'll look at examples, we'll look at data, and then here you can see, you can have access to all the stuff there. You can instantiate something into your world up here. So for example, let me just go up here, I'll go file, and we'll create a new scene. There is our default scene. And what do we have down here? We got a barrel. All right, so drop a barrel into our world. Uh, you've got controls over how it is, is created and set up right there. And then boom, so then that's really the kind of the extent of it. You basically uh, can start instantiating scenes that way. Uh, just pull that in completely. So you can bring, bring in entire scenes as models if you so wish. I think that's loaded. I'm not sure what it's going to... No, it's not loaded. All right, so give it some time. I'm not really sure. Uh, but that is the idea. You basically use this thing to start placing entities in your world. There's more to it than just this guy. So come up here, you see create. And we have a number of different options in place. So we've got things like particle systems. We can create a particle system like so. Uh, and then if I select the particle system over here, all of the various different properties of that particle system are available over here. You're going to notice physics also. Uh, you've got control over how physics are created. So for our barrel object, for example, here, uh, we could set up physics on it. So we could dynamic, static, and so on. So if we made this dynamic object, uh, you can set up the collider on it, etc. So you've got control over all the physics, set, uh, the mass of objects. Uh, we've got terrain tools. We can create cameras, uh, uh, lights. So let's go ahead and create a light in the world. Now I do find, all right, come on, point light. So there we go. We've got a point light in the world. Now there are definitely uh, a few areas I would like to see uh, cleaned up in this one. Uh, for example, I have no idea what this icon does. And it... Uh, it has no no tool tip or anything. I also find the use of non-system file explorers always a little bit on the janky side. And I've had some crashes down here for the most part. But you can use this to create everything you want. So if you can come in here and create a train map. For example, we saw the train example earlier on. So there it is in action. So let's select our train. And then you can notice over here you've got editing brushes. So then we can, we can start drawing our train in 3D shape. So this is where you would create your world objects. Now, once you're actually done, I'm not gonna save that, you're cr basically creating uh, data files that you could then use in your uh, project. So here you can see the process of actually loading. So it creates an RGS, your scene file, and you can load them in using this mechanism right there. So pretty straightforward and easy on the whole. That is the editor aspect, the Rusty editor. The other aspect, of course, is the RG3 game engine itself. Uh, they are available, by the way, at rg3d.rs. Number of nice features there. If you want to go ahead, check out their Discord server for more details there as well. Uh, it is an interesting project. Again, it's pretty young, 2.0. 0.23 at this point in time, but it's also pretty robust. There's quite a bit of functionality going on and they are dog fooding it to create their own game. So if you are looking for a 3D game engine for Rust, this is definitely another one worth checking out. So that was RG3D, uh, a Rust Power 3D game engine, open source, MIT licensed with a full editor also as a separate project, also MIT licensed. Let me know what you think. Uh, comments down below. Again, one of the big challenges with this one, there is really very, very, very little documentation. So if you're not 
comfortable just jumping into source code. Uh, and if these tutorials aren't enough for you, uh, then you're kind of uh, on your own. So you've really got these tutorials and then you're gonna have to be able to read source code to figure out how things work. Now the tutorials are pretty um, long and comprehensive, uh, but really there's just a couple of them. So there's no real reference manual or that kind of stuff yet. Hopefully in time, those do come. So you get nice comprehensive tutorials here as well though. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see what this turns into. So I leave off with a question. What do you think of Rust? And what do you think of RG3D? And if you are a Rust fan, what game engine are you using or are you rolling your own? That's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.